For improved system performance, long-term financial returns, and less risk on your PV projects, look to the proven performance of DuPont Materials and Solutions. Hello and welcome to this week's PV Tech Newscast with me, Warren Major. In this week's programme, foreign and domestic buyer interest shown in Q cells. REC to close final 650 megawatt Norwegian wafer plant and Hyundai Heavy Industries achieves a record 19.7% efficiency with selective emitter cell. QCells has seen interest from both foreign and domestic enterprises looking to purchase the bankrupt PV manufacturer, according to the firm handling its operations under receivership. Demand for QCells products also remains strong as production of both crystalline solar cells and modules has resumed following the announcement of the insolvency in early April. Three shifts were being operated and a return to a full four-shift seven-day week was also being planned. Separately, the company has completed the construction of the largest European PV project located in Brandenburg, Briest. The construction of the 91 megawatt solar park took only eight weeks and the project on the former 200 hectare military base in the east of Germany is equipped with approximately 383,000 PV modules. REC is to completely close its wafer manufacturing operations in Norway. The plant is the second to be closed by REC in five weeks and signals the end of all REC's wafer operations in the country after the closure of the Klomfjord monocrystalline plant. The company said the decision to close the plant is mostly because they had to drop average silicon prices by 15%, wafer prices by 24%, and module prices by 18% due to competition from Chinese manufacturers. Following the dramatic recent reductions in the cost of polysilicon, prices are expected to stabilize by the end of 2013. Hyundai Heavy Industries has announced the achievement of 19.7% conversion efficiency for its copper contact solar cells. The record for a selective emitter cell was obtained using standard 156 mm commercially available P-type silicon wafers and the results have been verified by the Fraunhofer ISE. The use of copper rather than silver has led to cost reductions of up to 30%. The selective emitter cell, which has a full area aluminium alloyed back electrode, beats the previous record of 19.6% efficiency held by a Chinese company using only 125 mm wafers. Chile has been receiving an increasing amount of attention from solar developers in recent months. The Atacama Desert in the north of the country receives some of the highest levels of solar irradiance on Earth, coupled with very low rainfall, making Chile an ideal place for solar farms. Interested parties include German solar giant Dewey, First Solar and Ingenistrum, which plan to build six solar PV projects totaling 688 megawatt generating capacity and costing close to 2 billion US dollars. Many of the proposed solar projects are being funded by mining companies that are tapping Chile's huge copper reserves but have been plagued by unreliable electricity sources. Mining currently consumes an estimated 80% of northern Chile's electricity and it's expected the industry's demand for power will grow 5% annually for the next few years. Despite having no feed-in tariff or incentive scheme, Chile has set a target of obtaining 10% of its electricity from renewable sources by 2024. However, Chilean President Sebastian Pinera has recently said that the use of renewable energy sources could increase by as much as 20%. Currently, just 4% of Chile's electricity is produced from non-conventional renewable sources. 
And finally, large-scale solar in India was given a showcase last week when Honourable Chief Minister of Gujarat, Narendra Modi, dedicated over 600 megawatts of commission solar projects to the nation. The celebration of Indian solar innovation and ambition was delivered to over 10,000 people at the Charanka Solar Park, a 200 megawatt facility in the northwestern state of Gujarat, close to the Pakistan border. The inauguration ceremony was part of the Indian Solar Investment and Technology Summit organised by Solar Media. The event, which attracted over 750 international and domestic attendees and more than 60 exhibiting companies, was hosted by the government of Gujarat, with Mr Pandian, India's most celebrated solar policymaker, personally welcoming the attendees during his opening speech. That's your PV Tech newscast for this week. Keep up to date in the usual ways online and via Twitter. Thanks for watching and have a good week.